Hi, thank you everybody for joining us. I am Rachel Christine Woody. I'm the consulting archivist working on this project for Astoria Public Library. And I am here today with John Goodenberger. He is the city historian for the city of Astoria. And we were able to do this work thanks to the Oregon Cultural Trust. So without further ado, I am gonna hand it over to you, John. Great, thank you. Um, in our previous videos, uh, we have looked at collections based on the people who collected the items. And so today, I just want to look, have you look at a small collection. And this, instead of being based on who put it together, it's being based on its content. And, and this has a long name to it. It's early 19th century regional logging, lumber mill, and sawmill collection. So it's a long, uh, a long title, um, and it's a, it's a really kind of a sweet little collection of um, a variety of objects. Now, you know, um, we think about logging and lumber and all, and we can go all the way back, if, if we're gonna exp extend the, our sense of region, all the way to uh, Fort Vancouver. And I think the first there was about 1827. And that was with John McLaughlin. And uh, we had Hawaiian men uh, doing logging there. But coming a little bit closer to Astoria, we have Hunt's Mill, which is near Clifton. And that was about 1843. So we've been at it in this area for quite some time. And so we've been able to collect things along the way because of that. So one thing we have collected on the way um, are photo albums. And this is a really nice photo album and it's, a, it's delicate. Some of the photos are loose. I'm a little cautious here and I'll show you a close up in just a moment. Um, but this is from the Woluski and Lubisky logging um, companies. And it was uh, John Trollinger and Andrew Young. And this has you know, very um, kind of um, uh, homey photos of the families out in the woods working together. Um, and it has wonderful photos of, of the machinery that they were using, et cetera. So you get a really nice um, kind of a, a sense of their life in a logging uh, camp. Now, we don't have it as a part of this specific collection, but we do have uh, within the vortex, some writings of Churchill, who uh, did um, Sam Churchill, who did Big Sam, writing about his father in the Olney logging camps. And that's a wonderful set of books that he wrote about growing up in those camps. So we have some of that initial information uh, about uh, for his book here within the vortex. Something else that we have uh, within the vortex uh, would be um, this series of colored slides. So it's got to be 19, late 1930s forward, but I just think it's spectacular to be able to go into a logging camp and see the stuff in color and see the old machinery and see the steam trains and see all of that in color and they're beautifully photographed. And some of these, um, uh, it looks like uh, Mount Rainier in the background, so it's not super local, but others may be more local. Regardless, it gives you a nice sense of what it was like to be in a logging camp. Then we have um, a series of time books from some of the uh, lumber mills. And what I think is important there is one, it's a little, you can do a little bit of genealogy to see who might be working there and what years they might be working there. Also, it's just kind of neat to be able to see how many hours they put in, uh, what their pay was, et cetera. So, I mean, that's kind of just a, a neat way to look at life. And uh, I'm sure there are probably names here that people might um, recognize. So we have that sort of thing within the collection itself. And this is from the um, 
let's see, the Columbia Hudson Lumber Company. And this is a piece of paper that shows the symbols that they would use on their logs as they would float them down the river. It's kind of like thinking about uh, branding a cow, you know, so you know what, whose cow is whose. And so within the collection, we have a series of documents for certification of different symbols for the different logging companies. And so for instance, here we have one that's for uh, the Noyes Holland Logging Company. And this dates to 1916. Now, you know, we aren't finished within the vortex as far as getting everything together. And you can imagine that, you know, somebody has tried to make a first pass and they did a great job, but things just get stuck together. And so as I was uh, pulling out these uh, stamps for uh, logs today, within the same little folder was um, something, a, a license for public dance halls uh, for the logging communities. And from there, it went to um, permission for, uh, it was basically a liquor license for a variety of people out near logging camps and uh, to sell uh, spirits. And this is one in 1882. And then for some reason, I think it's the ghost of the vortex who has a little sense of humor here. Um, within that is a license for the Baptist minister <laughs> to, to be able to perform marriage licenses or marriage uh, ceremonies and, and whatnot. So we have from the sale of spirits to marriage licenses all within the same uh, file. So we'll have to kind of uh, keep these se separate now for a future separating and uh, put them in the proper file so somebody can find this later. But that's really just kind of the thing that we're working with down here in the vortex. Um, it'll be a long time before every last thing is in order and there's still little surprises like that along the way. You know, I'm so glad that you uh, discussed the, you know, things just sort of get put together uh, as an archivist, as you can imagine that that's the nature of our work is that we come into boxes of collections that may or may not have already been sort of sorted and trying to sort of unpick those un unvisible threads to find out what documents are truly meant to be connected and together as a historical record and then what other documents just sort of happen to end up together in a box. You know, John, I did have a question for you. You mentioned the slides and the fact that they're colored slides and thinking back to my, my photographic history class, that I think that's unusual, right? For that early of a time period to have colored slides? Yeah, and I'm just guessing the late 30s. I can't swear that. I, I'll sure. post your photography class. Wonderful. Was well, there anything else you'd like to share with us, John? Uh, no, I think that's it for today. I think that um, we'll, we'll finish this up. Excellent. Well, John and I are going to do a Q&A session on December 3rd, and we invite you to register for that event and send your questions. There will be uh, contact information and the register link attached to this video. And of course, in the meantime, or, or if it's after December 3rd and you happen to find your way to this video, if you have any follow-up questions, um, there will be information for how you can send that to the right person. So thank you, John, for the wonderful tour. And thank you everybody for joining us today and thanks to the Oregon Cultural Trust.